All right, so section 4.4 .4 is conversion between number bases, and we've actually done a little bit of the leg work on this already. That is, we've learned how to convert between some number bases. In fact, we did one on the board that was asked before um, our quiz about um, converting into Mayan, right? It was into this sort of a modified base 20 system. So we've also, so we've converted between our base 10 into base 20. What else have we converted into? Base 60. Base 60, which was what, who did, who had base 60? The Babylonians, right. So what we're going to work in in this section, part of what we're going to work in is other base systems, that is anything else besides the ones that we've looked at already before. Before we can actually convert between them, we're going to talk a little bit about what they look like. And we're going to actually start with the system that you're most familiar with, which is our base 10 number system. Now, we've talked about this, but we haven't actually written some of these features down. So that's where we're going to start. So our base num 10 number system has 10 numerals, 10 different looking symbols. And what are our symbols for our number system? What's the smallest one? Zero is the first one. And what's the largest one? Nine. So we've got from zero up to nine in our number system. So there is no numeral that is a single symbol for the number that we call 10, right? It actually takes two numerals to write the number 10, and it's a 1 and a 0. Now, what we really did when we wrote down the number 10 is we ran out of things to write down. We ran out of symbols. So we had to create another way of writing them based on putting two symbols together, two of our numerals together. And that's what's going to happen in all the other number systems as well. Whatever we run out of, then we're going to have to use two digits in order to write something down. And so when we run out of one with another number attached to it, Right, one nine's the biggest one. And then what we do is we change that nine, in essence, to a zero, and we increase the one to be a two. And this is exactly how it works for all of the other number systems. Now, just a reminder again, why do we use base 10? Where did that come from? Fingers, right? There's 10 fingers. If we'd been born with eight fingers, we probably would not be using base 10. Okay, well, I know we have eight fingers, we can't count the thumbs, but you know what I mean. Okay. So um, base 5 number system, which is actually a number system that has been used historically, again, because people are counting one hand, numbers on one hand, um, does not have 10 numerals. How many numerals do you suppose it has? Five. five. Whatever the name of the base system is, that's how many numerals it has. And it always starts with the numeral zero, which means if I start with zero, how far up can I go? Four. So there is no five in base 5, right? There's only up to four. And I've run out of numerals, because I only have five numerals. I've listed all five of them. What comes next if I've run out of numerals? What came next in our system? No, what came next in our system? Ten came next in our system. I had to use two digits, right? Now, we're not going to call it ten in base five, because it's not equal to ten. It's actually equal to five. It's what we would call base 5 if we were in 5 and all of that good stuff. But what we are going to do is we're going to write it down, and it's going to look like what we used to call 10. We're not going to call it that, though. We're going to call it 1, 0. Okay? That way we're careful and we're not sort of thinking that we're in base 10 when we're not. So when we say 1, 0, that sort of flags us this idea that, oh, I'm not in base 10 anymore. I know it looks like a 10, but it's not a 10. It's a 1, 0. And I'm going to keep counting up from 1, 0. What's the highest I can go? 1, 4, because 4 is the largest numeral. What happens after I get to 1, 4? I get 2, 0. And we would keep going up from there. Now, let's just talk about two-digit numbers for a moment. What is our biggest two-digit number in our system? 99, right? 99 would be our largest one, two nines, because there's the two largest numerals. What would be the largest two-digit numeral in base 5? 4-4, four, four, right? Because those are the two largest, it is the largest numeral, and you would write it twice. We're going to talk a little bit more about base 5 later. Um, let's look at base 7. What are the base 7 numerals? Well, I start with 0 because I always start with 0. How high do I get to go? 6. And what's happening after 6? 1-0. I run out of numerals. I need two of them now to make up a number. And I can go from 1, 0 up to 1, 6 before I run out again. Okay. 
And then after 1, 6, I have 2, 0. So what would the largest two-digit numeral be in base 7? 6, 6. Would. What would come after 6, 6? Right, good job. 1, 0, 0. We need three-digit numeral, right? Same thing. After 99 comes our number, 100, which is a 1 followed by two zeros. And that's exactly what would happen in any other base system as well. Now, base 12 is a little different. What's different about 12 versus the others we've looked at so far? It's a bigger digit than we have, right? When I talked about base 5 and base 7, those were smaller. I just sort of stopped writing numerals after the number I could stop with, right? But base 12 means I'm going to have more numerals. How many numerals should I have in base 12? 12. Yeah, so we have to do something a little bit different. Garrett, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to say, so, base 7? Uh-huh. We could go up to, like, 7 or 666? Yes, that would be your largest three-digit numeral would be 666. So how would we answer that on a test? Like, how would you answer what on a like, test? What would you say, like, base 7, number 6, number 6? Um, you'll see what the questions are going to start to look like here in a minute. I just want to explore a little bit of how, the, how you move between the numbers first, but you'll see, I promise. And if you still have questions, you let me know, okay? Um, so base 12 numbers, I need something more than the number system that I have because the number system I only have only has 10 digits. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we certainly can use all the numerals we already have. We can go from 0 up to 9. Okay. But how many numerals is that? Ten, and I need a couple more, don't I? <coughs> and it is not going to be helpful for me to write down the number one zero next because that's a two-digit numeral, and I need it to be one digit to make this work. So what you're, there's a couple of different things you can do. What your book chooses to do is to start with the alphabet and the first letter of the alphabet. So A will be our number that will represent the number ten. So if you ever see an A in anything that we're working with, that's the number 10, okay? And what do you suppose then would be our number 11? B, right? So anytime you see the number B, that is a B in, our, in any of these number systems, that's going to be actually our number 11. And then at that point, you run out of digits. And our computer is going to stop working, I suppose. Oh, look, it came up. Okay, so I've run out of digits. I've got 12 digits up there. So what happens in any other system when I run out of digits? You go to a two-digit number called one zero, and you do the same thing here. So we've got one zero. And I can go from one zero up to one nine. And what would happen after 1, 9? It would be 1A, because that's my next numeral that's one bigger. And after 1A, I would have 1B. 1B first, and then 2, 0, because I've run out of numerals. So I'm going to get 0. Okay, make sense? So let's ask the same question I asked in the other ones. What's the biggest two-digit value in base 12? BB. BB. That's right. Everybody good with that? Okay. So um, let's pause for a moment and talk a little bit about other systems that you use that are other base systems, because you use some and you probably aren't aware of them. They don't necessarily have A's and B's in them to represent the different digits, but they do change things in a little bit different ways. So does anybody know of any other base systems that you use on a regular basis that are other bases? What do you use in music? For your different... Um, for your different pitches, you could relate that within the base system because when you run out of the value, you actually have to start over. Yep, so it actually repeats itself. It's not quite the same because it doesn't repeat itself as a two digit, but it does do the repeating issue. That's a good example. Okay, so say that really loud for me, Austin, because I'm going to come back to that idea in a minute. 
with money, counting, what did you say? Quarters. quarters. So how many quarters would you give somebody back ever, really? If you were counting back change, what's the most number of quarters you typically would ever hand anybody back? Three. Why three? Because if you gave them four, that'd be weird. <laughs> They'd say, I don't want four quarters. I want a dollar bill or at the very least a dollar coin, right? So, yeah, we have this sort of an idea of changing things up with our money. And I'm going to do an example with money um, in a little bit. And we're going to look at a little bit of base five with money. It doesn't exactly model our system, but we can make a couple modifications and we can see it work. What else? What does computer programming use? Zeros and ones. Does anybody know what that's called? Binary. Binary. Binary is base two, and base two is used in computer programming. There's another base system used in computer programming. Do you know it? It's called hexadecimal. Hex means six. Decimal means des ten, right? Base ten. Our decimal system is base ten. Six plus ten is sixteen. Hexadecimal is base sixteen. And it is also used, we're going to see a base 16 item in our discussion today. Base 16 is used um, in computer programming as well. Base 16? Mm-hmm. Base 16. It's called hexadecimal. What's over there on my wall? You guys look at it probably 10 times while I'm up here talking. What is it? That's a clock. What does a clock use? It uses base 60 some of the time. What does it use base 60 for? Seconds and minutes. What else does it use? Base 12. base 12 for the number of hours. Now, it has this sort of a weird thing where it does the, the two-digit business, and it has that sort of thing like your music did, as you gave that example, right, where it just repeats. We just, we just start over again on our counting. We don't actually take it to a two-digit or a three-digit number or something like that. But definitely, we use base 12, which means if you do military time, you use base 24, Okay, so you actually use a lot of different number systems. Someone gave me a really good example in my other class, which I had not thought about, and I thought, oh, that's fabulous. Does anybody ever measure things um, on a scale where you're measuring out your food or something in ounces? Does anybody know how many ounces are in a pound? There's 16. 16 ounces in a pound. So if you're measuring ounces in pounds, that's actually base 16 hexadecimal as well. So there's actually a lot of different things where we use different base systems. You just don't think of them like that. You think of them as conversions or something like this, don't you? But they're really just different base systems. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take a couple of numbers and we're going to figure out what the number before this number is in this base system and the number afterwards. And as we think about this, sometimes it's helpful to think about, well, what would that look like in my base system? What would I do? And the other thing that is helpful is to recognize that usually when these questions are asked, one of them's easy. You're going, oh, well, that's an easy one. I know what that answer is. And the other one takes a little bit more thought. Okay, item of discussion number three. Do you see the little subscripts written next to these where the word is written out, five and 12? Whenever you're working in another base, you have to have a subscript next to it to indicate the base that you're working with. The way that that will look like on my math lab is my math lab actually has a toolbox on the left-hand side. Have you seen the toolbox? You may not have used it a lot yet. You will be using it now because they've got one of them where it's got a subscript, and you're going to need that subscript in order to write in that this is base 5 or something like that. Okay? All right, so let's do the easy one first. What number comes before 1, 4 in base 5? 1, 3. So this is before... 1, 3, and to indicate that we're in base 5, we're going to write subscript 5 down there beside it. If you leave off the subscript, it means you're in base 10. That's the default. Okay, so the default is no subscript, you're in base 10. So if you don't mean to be in base 10, don't make sure, you know, make sure you write that subscript on there. The number after, I know you've already done it this, so it's not too bad. What's the number after 1, 4? 2, 0. And the real reason that it's 2, 0 is because when you do a 1 and a 4 in base 5, Four is as big as it gets. So I can't go one five, right? That's what I would do in our number system. I would say, oh, it's one five, but there aren't any fives. I've run out of digits. So I have to increase the first digit by one, turning into a two, and decrease the last digit into a zero. And this is base five. So let's do one that's a little bit more challenging because A zero zero looks a little bit funny, but there's one that's easy and one that's difficult. Which of them's easier, the before number or the after number? 
after. What is the after number for A00? A01. A01, that's right. Again, base 12. Now, the number before th takes a little bit of work. Any ideas? What about 9? Yeah, so that is the right idea, Leah. That's the right one. It is 9BB, but let's figure out how we got there. Because I don't think everyone was quite there yet, were you? So let me talk a little bit about our number system, and we're going to change the number into something in our system, you know, a similar problem. See what we do when we work in our system, and then we can figure out what to do in this other strange system that we're unfamiliar or uncommon, is uncommon to us. Let's say that we had the number instead of A00, we had the number, I don't know, like 800. Okay, so all I did was change the A to a number that I'm familiar with. This is in base 10, so I'm not going to write a subscript on there. What do we do if we want the number before 800? We subtract 1. What does it change the 8 into? A 7. What does it change the zeros into? 9s. And why? Well, I can certainly go one less here, and that's exactly what happens with this A. A is worth how much? 10, actually, right? It's worth 10. And what value is less than 10? 9. 1 less than 10, I should have said. It's 9. So the number that A turns into is 1 less. Now, these zeros turn into 9s. Why? <laughs> Say louder. It's before them. Because what is, what is 9 in our base system? It's the biggest thing we have, isn't it? 9 is the biggest value that we have in our system. So we do the same thing with this A00 in base 12. We've got to turn those zeros into the biggest thing we have in that system. And what is the biggest value in base 12? B. B. And that's where the BBs come from. And again, it's base 12. And it's a lot easier to think about if you turn it into, what do I do in my system? How does that really change things, right? It makes it the largest value I have on the last two digits, and then the one before just becomes one less. Okay, are we good with this? All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of numbers, and we're going to turn them from their weird base. And notice I've got the hexadecimal and the binary on here, um, sort of as a uh, discussion we had before with the, with the computer science stuff, right? We're going to turn them into base 10. Now, here's something else I want you to notice. Look at those directions because they look a little funny. It says convert each number to decimal form by expanding in powers. And then I've got another half of a sentence, but it's got a line through it. You don't have to do that half of the sentence, OK? That half of the sentence says, and by using the calculator shortcut. There is another method for doing this, OK? If you want to read about it in your book and you want to discover how to do that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm not going to teach it. And the reason I'm not is because it really hides what's going on. It has, does nothing to help you figure out what in the world is happening here in the numbers. So I'm going to focus on the first part, which is the expanding in powers. Now, you've seen expanding in powers before because you did it in 4.3, if you did your 4.3 anyway. So what we're going to do is I'm going to write out four lines because this is a four-digit number. And I'm going to put these numbers in there on top of those lines. What I want to do underneath them is I want to write the place value. This is what we did with base 10, right? Base 10, we had all 10s underneath here with different powers of 10s. Do you remember that? We're going to do the same thing for this, but it's not base 10. It's base 2. So I'm going to write 2s underneath everything with powers on the 2s. So the first power on the far right is always the power of 0, 2 to the 0. And then as I move left, I increase my powers by 1 each time. So this is 2 to the 1, 2 squared, and 2 cubed. That is a 3. It looks almost like an 8, but it's a 3. Okay, so is everybody okay with that? And then what we meant in our system, for instance, in our system, if we have the number 3046, this 3 doesn't really mean 3. It means 3 what? It means 3,000. It means 3 times 1,000, correct? 
That's exactly what we're going to do with this base 2 number. This 1 doesn't mean 1. It means 1 times 2 to the third. Okay? And I know I've got a 0 here, but this means 0 times 2 squared. And it means 1 times 2 to the first and so forth. So I want to go through, and I'm going to write it out in that way. So I've got 1 times 2 cubed, and I'll show you another way you can write this in a moment, plus 0 times 2 squared, plus 1 times 2 to the first, plus 1 times 2 to the 0. Now, if you want to write it out like that and just go from there to your answer, some of your calculators will allow you to do that, and that's just fine. I'm happy with that. If you don't want to write this out or if you want to write it out and then think a little bit more about what it means, you can write one more step, and this other step you could write in lieu of this step, too. If you don't want to write the step I just wrote down, you could write the step I'm about to write down. And it looks like this. Well, I know that I've got the number 1 here, but what's 2 cubed? That's 8. Yeah. And then I'm going to keep writing the 0 just so that we remember it's, it's there, not because it's going to actually affect anything, but 2 squared is 4. 2 to the first is 2. And then what's anything to the 0 power? 1. So we're always going to have times 1 at the end of these. It's going to show up in a second here, but there's going to be a times 1 right here. So you can grab your calculator. Again, you can multiply these out piece by piece. Some of your calculators will let you multiply all of it in there at once. Whatever your calculator does, what I want to see next is your solution. If you show some more steps between there, fine. Okay? So somebody's going to multiply this out, and you're going to tell me, what do you get for this? You can probably do this in your head. Trent Luna said, what'd you get? 11. If you want to always be in the habit, this won't work probably on my math, but I bet it'll freak out if you do it, but if you want to be always in the habit on your written work of doing it, you could write the word 10 beside that, okay? But again, if you don't write it, it's understood to be base 10, and it is base 10 because that's the whole point. We're turning it into decimal form, which means base 10, our number. So 11 is correct. It is 11. All right, so let's take a look at the next one because it looks funny. I don't even see any numbers. Do you? But you know that they represent numbers because we've already talked about that, right? So I'm going to write out my same four values. And the only reason it's four is because there's four given. If they gave you six, you'd write out six of these little lines. And what I want to write in each of them is actually what these values are. What is A? Close. It's 10. So we're going to write a 10 right here. What is B? That's 11. What is C? It's 12. And then what is D? It's 13. Okay, so that's how it's always going to work. D's always going to be 13. C's always going to be 12. Okay, so we're going to write down 10, 11, 12, and 13. And underneath them, we're going to write the bases that they're representing. What base system was this one? 16. So I'm going to write out powers of 16 underneath it. It's like magic, see? I'm writing. It's a great magic show. All right, I'm going to write past the and we're going to hope that it shows up for you guys. All right, so we start underneath the 13 here at the end, and we're going to write what? 16 to the 0, because it's base 16, and we always write to the 0 power on the far right. And then this one right here, this is going to be 16 to the 1. Underneath the number 11, what are we going to write? 16 squared. And how about underneath the number 10? 16 cubed. All right, so we've got them all up on the screen now, and we are going to do the same thing we did in the last one. You're going to take each place times its place value. Okay, the value that's in the place times the place value. So what we're going to write down, I'm going to give yourself a little space so it doesn't run into anything, is that we're going to have 10 times 16 cubed plus 11 times 16 squared plus 
12 times 16 to the first plus 13 times 16 to the zero. And if you want to write this and stop, which is what I'm going to do on this one, that's great. If you want to write down another step where you find the powers of the 16, you can do that. But you've got to show me something of this when you do your work. I don't want it to look like magic. I don't want to see that you started with A, B, C, D, base 16 and you get an answer. That does not show me anything except that you've got a really good friend who knows what they're doing or you've got a back of a book, okay? So please make sure you show me some of the work in between. You don't have to show me every single step, but something that indicates that you know how this power stuff works. All right, so somebody's got a calculator. I'm just sure of it. I'm hoping. Yeah. All right, so do this for me. Can you multiply that out? 10 times 16 cubed, 11 times 16 squared, 12 times 16, 13 times 1, and then add them together. Make sure that when you do come prepared next week, Tuesday, for this test, you've got a calculator that will do it, though, because you're going to need it. You don't want to have to be multiplying something out by hand when we get there. Okay, Austin's working out it, working it out. Angela, you've got it going, too, don't you? Do you have an answer? Katrina, okay, what do you get? Sure, the final answer would be great. That's what I have, too. Good job. Okay, so those of you who are still working out, are we close? And the, the last power, the 16, 16 this zero. is to the zero. This is just the value one. Okay. Yeah, that's just the value one. Kind of like the 16 to the one. You can just know that's 16, so you don't have to mess with it each time. Okay, is this all right? Okay, I want to do it in an example that's not in your notes. How exciting is that? So I'm going to go to the very end of this um, slideshow so that I can get a blank screen. Because I think this shows you a really good example of the money situation that Austin brought up and that I wanted to show you how it works. So we're going to pretend for the moment that we do not have dimes in our number system, okay? No dimes, no dimes allowed. All we have are pennies, nickels, and quarters, and for whatever reason, there are no dollar bills in my drawer, okay? So I, I, I can actually give somebody back four quarters because I don't have any dollar bills. Everybody good with that? Okay. So. What I want to show you is what happens when we have four quarters. Uh, we'll do three nickels and two pennies. Now, you guys can add up how much that is, and you can probably do it fairly quickly. How much money is that? I want to show you that what we've been doing with this powers is exactly what you just did in your head and you did it very quickly because you're familiar and comfortable with your money system. What this number is, is it's actually 4, 3, 2, base 5. Can you see it? Here's how it works. You've got the 4, you've got the 3, and you've got the 2. And this is base 5, so this is 5 to the 0, 5 to the 1, and 5 squared. But what's 5 squared? It's 25, right? That's your quarter. And 5 to the 1 is 5, and that's your nickel. And 5 to the 0 is 1, and that's your penny. So when we've been working this out, we've been saying, I'm going to do 4 times 5 squared. That's the dollar that you've gotten. I'm going to have 3 times 5 to the 1, that's the 15 cents for my 3 nickels, and then I'm going to have 2 times 5 to the 0, that's the 2 pennies that are the 2 cents. So I have 100, I have 15 here, sorry, that looks like a 75, it's not, and then I've got 2 here for 117, and it would be a $1.17 because we just did it in terms of cents instead of in terms of dollars. You do this all the time when you count your money. And I know we don't exactly have a base 10 system or a base 5 system with our money because we do have dimes and we've got half dollars and we've got other strange things going on. But this is the idea of what you do when you count money back. Okay, you're thinking about it in base 5 and you're counting it in base 10. It's a little different. Your coins are different than your actual counting is. All right, so I wanted to show you that that actually works. Let's take a look then at number 
five. What is different about the directions here? What are we doing here? We're changing bases, and how are we changing them? Right. We're taking our number and we're turning it into some other system's numbers, right? It's, we're doing it backwards. It's just flipped it around. But when we do that, it actually changes the process. So you tell me, I'm going to flip back the slide here for a second, what operation did we use to go from other bases into our base? Multiplication. multiplication. That's exactly what we did back with those Babylonians and those Mayans too. To turn it from their base into our base, we multiply. So what are we going to do if we turn it in from our base into their base? We're going to divide. And we already have that sort of scaffolding division thing that we did before that's fabulous for doing that. Except that we haven't done it in other bases, so we're going to have to explore that a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to take a look at what base system we're in. This says base 4. Right? And I need to figure out what some of the powers of 4 are. So I know that the first power is actually going to be the number 1. And then I've got 4 to the 1, which is 4. So you can take your calculator and you can actually multiply 4 times 4, which is 16. And then multiply it by 4 again. And what do you get? 64. 64. We're almost there, Leah. What's the next one? 256. Multiply by 4 again. 1, oh. Okay, let me try that one more time. 1,024, because I ran out of space. What comes before 1,024? It's 4,000 something, right? 4,096. Let's do one more. 384. Okay. And I contend that I've gone far enough. How do I know it's too far or far enough? It's bigger than the number I'm working with. The number I'm working with is ele looks like 11,000, right? I've got 11,000 there, and this number is 16,000, which is too big. I've got to go far enough that I know that I've gone far enough. <laughs> that was really silly. Okay, that's right. Um, so what we're going to do is exactly what we did before. We're going to take the number 11,028, and we're going to divide it by the biggest power of 4 that we can. And in this case, that's 4,096. Okay, so everyone with a calculator is going to divide for me and tell me, how many times will 4,096 evenly go into to, to 11,028? Is it twice? Yes? Twice? Three times will be too much because that would be over 12,000. All right, so what's 4096 times 2? 8, You're all going to bring calculators right now next time. What'd you have? 8,000, what? 192. 192. All right, and then we're going to subtract 11,028 minus 8,192. Okay, everybody's killing me. Go ahead and get your phones out. Some of you already have them out, and you're actually doing real work with them, so that's okay. What do you have? 3,000. How much? I think it's 2,000, too. 2,836? Yeah, okay. All right, so everybody, if you have your phone with you and it has a calculator, go ahead and get it out as long as you promise me you're really going to do this math, okay? I can't believe I just said that. And it's on recording. Ooh, that didn't really happen. But you're all going to behave because you guys are a good class. All right, so what are we going to divide by next? Yeah, whatever the next power is beneath that, whether it goes in or not. This one will, but even if it didn't work, we would still divide by this next, okay? So how many times will 1,024 go into 2,836? Twice again. Okay, you should be able to do this one in your head, but if you can't, grab your calculator. 2 times 1024 is 2,048. And then we're going to subtract 2,836 minus 2,048. 
788. Then what are we going to divide by? 256. And it will go in how many times? Three times, that's right. Now, let me pause for a second and make a comment. If in you're doing any of these divisions, you end up getting a number here that says 4, 5, 6, 7, something like that, you've got a problem. Why? Because we're in base 4. So every time you do these divisions, you better be getting numbers between 0 and 3. If, you've got a, if you're getting a bigger number, you've got a problem and you need to go back and figure out what it is. Okay? All right, so this one went in 3 times. What's 3 times 256? 768. And if I subtract, what do I get? 20. And so I'm about to write down something that looks a little bit funny. I'm going to do a division by what? 64. And I recognize that it's going to go in how many times? Zero. And I'm okay with that, but I need that zero because that's part of my answer. Don't skip it or you're going to be missing a zero in your solution. So yes, I realize this is zero and I still have a remainder of 20 and now I'm out of space at the bottom of my screen. So we're going to come over here. I've got 20 left. What's the next value I'm going to divide by? 16, which will go in exactly how many times? Once. 1 times 16 is 16, with a remainder of 4. And what will I divide by next? 4. It will go in exactly once. 1 times 4 is 4, and here's where something different is going to happen. I've got a remainder of 0, but I still need to do one more division. What do I need to divide by? I need to divide by 1, the very last value, because Again, I'll be missing something if I don't. I'll be missing that zero. It goes in zero times. The solution is exactly right here. It's 2230110. What? Base four. Don't forget that. I promise I'll take off points. Okay? You've got to have the base four down there. Are we good? Make sense? Okay, because we're going to do another one. Because it sounded fun, we're going to do 9,000, sorry, 99,999 into base 9, which has no 9s. That's right, so just for fun. All right, so um, we need the powers of 9 in order to do this. The first power of 9 is actually the number... One. It always starts with one. So let me write it here on the far right. And nine's the next one. What's the next power of nine? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. And you can get them in successive order just by multiplying by nine. So what's beyond eighty-one? Like eighty-one times nine? Seven twenty-nine. And then times nine again? Oh goodness. Let's try one more time. 6,561. Do I have a confirmation? Yes. Okay, great. And then what's next? Okay. And although this number is not bigger than the number I'm starting with, I know I'm done. Right? Because how many times will 59,000 go into 99,000? Once. So you can do one more if you want to see for sure that you really are done, but I, I promise you are because the number here is just big enough it's going to go in once anyway. So then we're ready to do the scaffolding. We're going to do 59, 49, 59,049 into 99,999. And you guys already told me it went in once. So we will subtract the 59,049. And what will my remainder be? Do I have one? Forty thousand nine hundred fifty. Okay. What will I divide by next? Right. And how many times will that go in? Six. Okay. What is six times six thousand five hundred sixty-one? Okay, say again for me a little bit louder. 39,366. Thank you. All right, and if we subtract, where does that put us? Excellent. 
What will I divide by next? 729, which will go in twice. Is that right? All right, what's 2 times 729? 729. Great. We're coming right on down. Subtraction, and we get what? 126, which we'll divide then by 81. How many times will 81 go into 126? All right, so contrary to the fact that it's not showing up on my screen for you guys to see, I have it there. What is 126 minus 81? 45. What will I divide by next? 9. Okay. All right, so this one goes in 5 times, and 5 times 49, I'm sorry, 5 times 9 is 45. Remainder of 0. Don't be tempted to stop too early. What do you still have to do down here at the bottom? Divide by 1 to get that last 0, because that 0 is part of your solution, right? So this is your answer all here along the right-hand side. So your answer is... Base 9, right. All right. How are you doing? Are we okay? All right, we're not going to quite finish today, but that's okay. We'll just finish it next time with part of your review. Let's do one more, I think, and we'll, be, we'll call it quits for today with two examples left, okay? All right. This is a conversion, but what's different about this conversion than the ones we've done? I have base 7 and I have base 5, and neither of those are base 10, okay? So although it doesn't say this, this is one of those two-step process kind of math things. You've got to take it from wherever it is and first put it into base 10, and then you're going to take it from base 10 into the base you want. So it doesn't say it, but there are two steps to doing this. One of them is going to, and the intermediate step is the base 10 step. So in essence, what I want to do is I want to go from 5 to 10 and then to 7. Are you with me? Okay, so let's actually write this down because we've said it before. I haven't actually written it. Anytime I turn from a base into our base, which operation do I use? Multiplication. So I'm going to multiply to get that step. And then if I take base 10 into another base, what do I use? That is division. So I'll use division on that last step. Okay, everybody good so far? Okay, multiplication, division. All right, so I'm going to take 4, 3, which is an awful lot like four nickels and three pennies, right? This is base five. And I'm going to turn it into our number system. So this is five to the zero. This is five to the one. I actually have multiplication. So I take the four times five to the one, and I take the three times five to the zero. And what do I get? 23. Okay, is everybody to the 23 on this, and are we okay with that? Okay, so just as a reminder, I'm going to write it here, although I don't even usually write it. I am right now on base 10. Okay, I am not done. All I've done is I've done this first multiplication step into base 10. I've got the number 23. So what operation do I use then to get it to go into base 7? Division. So it's not going to be a very exciting scaffolding. That's actually why I chose this one first, just because it's relatively simple. But I'm doing a scaffolding with base 7. Base 7 has powers 1 and then 7. And what comes after 7 in base 7? 49. And do I need that? No, because my number is 23. So all I will be dividing by for 23, it, sorry, no, I, I read it right, it's what? 7. seven. That's the biggest power of 7 that goes into 23. And it goes in how many times? <laughs> 3 times. All right, 3 times 7 is 21. And 23 minus 21 is 2. What will I divide by next? 1. It goes in 2 times. 1 times 2 is 2, so I do get my remainder of 0. And my solution is right over here. The answer is 3, 2, base 7. Don't forget it. 
I want to make one comment here that will help you as you're doing your homework in thinking about this. Okay, I mean, you guys get a note card on your test, right? And you can write down this whole fact of how you, when you multiply versus when you divide. And I guarantee between these two classes, and it'll probably be in my other class, unfortunately, not necessarily in here, but there's going to be people who are going to do it backwards. Okay? There's, somebody's going to do it backwards. Don't make it you. Please don't be the one. I don't want any of you to do it backwards. But here's something that can help you to remain sure when you're done that it makes sense. Look at this number. 4, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2. We've got three numbers there, right? The smallest base up there is base what? Base 5. And what's the number in base 5? 4, 3. If you compare 4, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 2, what can you say about 4, 3? It looks like it's the biggest, doesn't it? Smaller base, bigger value. So if you got that another way, you've got an error in what you've done. Smaller base, bigger value. Bigger base, smaller value, right? Base 10 is the biggest one here. Smallest looking number. All right. Have a great couple days.